Hey guys, Steve in the studio with Chandler at Podium One Racing. We got a couple of cube control wheels here that we want to go over. Let's get into it. Personally at home, I use an F1 style wheel. We've reviewed a handful of different wheels on our little channel here that we have, but we've been selling a whole bunch of different wheels to people. This new CSX3 wheel from Cube Controls to me is one of the best wheels I've ever, I've ever touched. I love this wheel. I love this wheel. So it's 11 uh, inches across. It has rubberized grips, which at first kind of seems like, why do they do that? But everybody's been using Alcantara. And then of course you use it and it gets dirty and flat. You might as well have something that's going to hold up. That's really strong. That's not going to get all messed up and that you have to care about like you do the Alcantara. The, uh, the, the wheel itself, carbon fiber with a lot of aluminum, all the uh, encoders, the joysticks, the switches, all aluminum, CNC grade, mach machine grade aluminum. Amazing wheel. The inputs with this wheel are amazing, right? So we have 12, as you can see here, 12 individually backlit LED buttons. We have two funky switches. So full motion funky switches, up, down, left, right, diagonals, and they actually rotate. So like for black boxes or anything that you want to set up, menu options, right? Be able to go through this. In fact, when we have this set up with a stream deck and you launch the sim, I don't even have to touch a keyboard and a mouse anymore because this has so many inputs to it. We have four thumb encoders. So you have them right here on the grip and then you have another inside. You can actually see where it illuminates to tell you what button is there. Those are on each side. We have four encoders and they're, they're, they're nice. I mean, they click really well. I, I mean, I, I've beat Fanatec up enough, but like my Formula V2, these things are just trash. You don't, you don't even use them. Um, you can use the ones that are on the wheel, but they don't really work to the best. These are amazing. We put it on all the different sims. Everything's registered. Everything works the way that you're expecting it to work. Then we have two toggles up top, to toggle switches. Now, as you can see here on this one that's powered up, these actually turn on and off as far as the backlit LEDs. So amazing. We're also going to show you guys that you can change all the color of the buttons in SimHub and some of the other wheels that we have behind me um, that are already set up. And again, we'll get a close up on these, but you can change the colors to whatever you want. It's awesome. Um, the screen is a touch screen. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go more into that. And then as far as the paddles in the back, carbon fiber paddles, it comes default with four, four paddles. So obviously you have your shifters and then you have your clutch. You can add two additional uh, shifters on the top. So if you want to do DRS or ERS or look left, look right, whatever, you can add those on. You're also going to notice that it comes in two different colors in the back. So it comes with this really cool anodized blue, the cube controls blue. Um, or if you'd like, like what you can see here on this one, comes with black paddles, black shifters, right? What else is really cool is the power supply here that goes to it. It is magnetic as opposed to some of the other cube controls or other GSI wheels where you have to screw it on but it's really strong. I mean, you can hear it click and it doesn't just easily fall off and pull off. So I think that it, it's just an awesome wheel. Um, to me, it feels really good in the hands. And like I said, it, it just feels comfortable. It feels like what I'm used to. Uh, and I, we love it. As soon as we got one, actually, when we went to PRI, we made a quick change and changed out what wheels we were going to bring when we were doing the PRI event with Recaro. Chandler now has one at home. I've got one coming for me. These are what we're going to be using all the time as kind of our main wheels now. And this is what we're giving to a lot of our customers. Um, some of the downs of this wheel, because I, I have to mention those as well. As much as I love this wheel, fortunately, I already talked to Fabio and Massimo and Fabrizio and stuff with Cube Controls. They're aware of it and they're working through it. The shifters in the back, if you pull on them too hard, in fact, I'll just do it on this one. If you pull on them too hard, they actually move, right? Because there's a screw that should be in another place that's not. So they're already addressing that. Um, even though it's a brand new wheel, obviously things come up, things happen, but they've seen that, they're getting that addressed. But while we're talking about the paddles, let's go back to something that is kind of cool. You can adjust the, uh, th the length, if you will, of the carbon fiber shifter. So you just unscrew these two screws here. You slide these out and then that gives you for people that need more reach or less reach you can go ahead and, and dial those in pretty cool i think the only other negative uh with this which is kind of kind of dumb but it is what it is right is the stickers that they provide with it so you can see here for example on this wheel they don't have a light sticker so we had to use h for headlights we have f for flash right uh, like a upside down m for windshield wipers um, we don't have a talk button, so you have to have C for communication is kind of how we're doing it. But you get the idea. The, the, the stickers are a little lacking, 
But outside of that, really cool wheel. We think you guys will like it. We sell it online at podiumoneracing.com, um, as well as a lot of other cool cube control items that are coming. I don't know if you guys know, if you watched uh, the, uh, the Sim, um, Sim Expo, Cube Controls has uh, like another seven or so wheels coming out that are ranging. So typically they're a mid to high level wheel. They have a new one coming out that's gonna be in the low four, $500 range. They also teamed up with Mercedes. So you guys are gonna start seeing a lot of their new wheels that are gonna be Mercedes branded, which is pretty awesome. We, Chandler and I had a chance to touch and feel and use pretty much all of them. Um, and w as soon as we did, we're like, these things are gonna be amazing. We can't wait to get them off to everybody. We just got that GSI wheel, right? Um, oh. And I still like this one a lot better. The GSI wheel feels really nice, but it is a lot bigger. The buttons don't illuminate. You can't... The fit and finish of this is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's... It feels like a $1,500 wheel. And to me, the, the Gomez, while it's a nice wheel, the ergonomics are really nice, it's beefy. You can tell it's, I wouldn't say homemade, but you can tell it's not... It's not like, it's machine finish like this. Finish like this. I mean, these are, these are just really nice. I mean, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll jump on the sim. We'll show you guys some close-ups of the wheel, kind of show it in action, some of the things that it can do. Any questions, hit us up either on YouTube, um, on Instagram at Podium One Racing, or of course, PodiumOneRacing.com. Thanks. All right, guys, so now we're here sitting on the sim with the wheel attached, the wheel's installed. You wanna go to, go to Q Control's website, or you can go on Podium One Racing's website. We're gonna have links to all this as well, um, and download their software for the unit. Now, once you open that, I already have it open. Once you open it, you may find it's going to say this, waiting for device. You're like, what's going on? I've got it plugged in. There is a little button uh, on the left-hand side in between the two shifters, kind of in there, right? So you're going to reach in. I reach in with my middle finger. You reach in, push that button. The screen's going to turn on. It'll start doing its little breathing with the LEDs. And then here on the screen, now it shows up, right? So just got to make sure that by default, when the first time you turn it on, we don't power it off anymore after that. We just leave them on. You can, un if you need to, you just untake the, uh, you take the, uh, the power strip off the back, the power cable, and then you're, you're good to go. Um, on the cube control software, you can do a lot of different things. For example, again, you can change the color of the LEDs, but realize in Sim Hub, which is primarily what you're going to use for the screen and for Sims, it'll overwrite your colors here. So for example, I'll go ahead and change a couple colors. You can see how easy it is. You just click on a button, pick the color that you want. Let's go to this one. And we'll say we're gonna make this one uh, dark blue, right? So now you've got dark blue, we have a green one, we have a red one. But when we go to Sim Hub and get everything installed, you're gonna see that that goes away. Um, in the paddles, this is where you're really gonna, one thing you're gonna use is you're gonna set up your clutch bite point. So if you're doing standing starts and you kind of want to have that clutch by point where you let go and slowly let off the other one, you're going to set that up in here. And then, of course, for the device, you're going to do the firmware updates periodically as it needs to be done. But once that's done, I'll close out of that software. I'll close out of the website for now. And then we have Cube Controls. Excuse me, <laughs> SimHub. So in SimHub software, once you launch it, you're going to see it look like this. We're going to click on Devices over here on the left-hand side of the menu. Make sure you have the latest version of SimHub. If you're using an older one, it may not have uh, some of the things that you're gonna need. But if you have the latest version, click on devices. We're gonna click add device and you're gonna see cube controls. CSX3 is right there in the middle. So it's already in here natively, it's ready to go. You click that, you hit okay, and boom. Immediately you see it gets installed. The screen now has a display. And then of course, you notice the buttons immediately change. Now, again, you can go into here and change the LEDs yourself, uh, set up different profiles for different Sims and how they interact and what they do. Um, but by default, this is the color that it has and you see that it completely overrode what I already did in cube controls, right? And then you can also set up in here what you want to happen with the LEDs, uh, the LEDs as well as the screen itself for the controls. So for example, something that we like to do, uh, we have cycle, cycle, next dash, Click that, and we usually use this thumb encoder on this wheel. We scroll it to the right, hit save, configure on the next one, go to the left, hit save. And now from here, we should be able to start using the, the encoder, and you can see I can cycle through the different screens. <coughs> Excuse me. So some really cool screens that are on here. You can add more. Um, and again, like we mentioned before, there is also touch on this touch screen. So for certain displays that have touch capabilities and that do things, this can do that. So that's basically how to set the wheel up in a nutshell and how it comes out of the box. We're gonna go ahead and jump into a sim and take it around track.
All right, so one thing that I mentioned earlier when we were just showing the, the, the product on the table was how you can map everything to this. So once you're in the sim, and for now I'm using uh, ACC, a set of course of competition, um, I do everything now on the wheel. I can use the joysticks to move around. I can go ahead and set up, jump into a race. So we'll do a quick race. Let's go ahead and do something, kind of show this off a little better. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's go Zolder, and we're going to do... Uh, let's go later. So Zolder, because uh, it's in a different part of the world, we got to do it like that, and we'll just run the, this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get out on track. Now, if you notice, I'm in a D-Box system as well. Um, we're, we're using the Track Racer TR120 on this system with the D-Box Gen 5, which are the new actuators that just came out from D-Box. We're going to go ahead and do a review on those as well. But in the meantime, this, this is about the wheel. So let's get out on track. I have it where now I turn on the car. Let's turn on the engine. Now our lights aren't on, so we have the headlight button, so great. Now I can do flash, right? So you can see everything works really well on this. Uh, click this up, now my rain light is turned on. And you can see the screen, like how cool it is, right? And again, we can change it to on the fly while you're in the sim. Like this one has a picture of the track. So you can see who's on the track, where they're at, what's going on, it's kind of small. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But you get the idea. So now we go. Let's go ahead and flash at the guy. Get out of my way. You're all too slow. Because I'm using the CSX3 wheel that makes me faster than everybody. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it, right? So pretty cool wheel. All in all, we love this wheel. I, I'm going to use it as my main wheel moving forward until Q controls or somebody else comes out with something uh, actually better. But a great wheel. Find it on podiumoneracing.com. Any questions you guys have? It's been really cool with YouTube. You guys are always sending us uh, questions about products and stuff. Uh, let us know any questions that you have, if there's anything else out there that you'd like us to review or talk about. Otherwise, we'll see you out in track and have a good one.